Good evening. This is David Mandel and um, I want to talk to you today about um, file systems. Not file systems the way we discussed them in my previous video where we discussed the file system from the root directory and all the contents of the root directory like slash dev slash bin slash var. But today I want to talk about file systems in terms of more what I call their physical configuration. I want to talk about disk partitions, super blocks, inode tables, for, uh, partitioning a disk, formatting a disk, so on and so forth. There's really quite a lot of material here, um, so we'll, we'll get started. Um, but first let's um, discuss exactly what we will discuss. Um, the topics I want is we'll talk about MBRs and something called a GPT. We'll talk about um, um, oh and partitioning your disk uh, using something like the fdisk command. We'll talk about um, um, formatting your disk using the make uh, MKFS command or variants thereof. We'll talk about file systems in terms of Windows file systems, Unix file systems. Um, actually, we're going to discuss those quite a lot. And, um, and we'll talk about, you know, managing those, creating those, managing them, um, how to choose what to do. Um, we'll talk about mounting and U mounting disk. Um, and the role of slash etc slash um, fs tab. And then we'll talk about a few other things, including the dd command, which I think is kind of an important command. Um, and, and some just concepts that we won't talk about in detail because this video will be long enough as is. OK. With that in mind, the first thing we want to talk about is disk drives. Um, I grabbed a disk drive here that looks a little bit like, like, like this. Um, it's basically just a normal, um, normal, um, oh, desktop disk drive that I put into a, into a case, and. Um, uh, so it looks like this. This case happens to have a few features like eSOTA and um, Ethernet that most cases don't have. So we're going to use it like most cases with a our friendly USB connector. Um, OK, with that in mind, and in terms of a disk drive, if you want disk drives, you know, a lot of things look like disk drives nowadays. They can be things like this. They can be your internal disk drives. They can be flash disk. They can be um, little pieces of RAM or of um, you know like uh, SD cards, um, um, solid state disk, all sorts of things. Anyway, we've got our disk here. And we're going to start to look at it, and we're going to start to look at some of the concepts in it, on it. Um, let's just see where we're located there. Let me plug in the disk and turn it on. That will take me just a second here. We'll plug it in. Oops. And we'll turn our disk on. Now, I think this disk may have already been formatted. I don't, you know, um, in which case, once there, we'll just take a quick look at our disk here and see if we can see a little bit about the disk. Um, this is one of the quickest ways to see a disk. 
I wish this thing would mount on me. Um, don't know where that went. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Please see my disk. Okay. Now this should bring up a little window that will allow me to could not mount device. Oh. Couldn't mount my device. Why couldn't we mount the device? Well, okay. Um, we're supposed to be able to mount that device and take a look at that device, um, but for some reason we can't do that. Um, that happens. So we're going to go with it rather than starting over. And actually, I have a suspicion I know why that happens. I am on an older version of Linux, and I think I actually created that disk on, on a newer version of Linux that has file systems that are not supported by the current version of Linux. It's the same as trying to look at an NTFS disk using MS-DOS. Okay, so let's go over here. And a lot of disk things, you have to be root to look at your disk or mount your disk or do a lot of things with disk. There are ways of doing it as a user, but uh, these are, you know, historically done as root. So I'm going to become root on this system. And I will be root for a little while. Okay, I'm now root. I can tell I'm root because the ID command says that my UID is zero. Okay, <coughs> now I'm going to try and find that disk and that's going to be a bit of a pain because what I have to do is I'm going to have to guess at where that disk is. Um, let's take a look at our the disk we have currently, I'm going to use the command df minus th, th lowercase h. Well, df. What df does is that lists all the disk I have mounted, and it tells me where the free space is and um, um, how much free space is on a disk. OK, before we go on, what does mounted mean? Well. Just because of the device is in the, uh, in the computer doesn't mean that your operating system can access it. You usually need to have some sort of a command to basically incorporate that disk or file system into your operating system. In Unix, that command is called mount. And to get rid of it, to eject the disk kind of sort of eject it. That doesn't physically physically remove it, but just says I no longer want to use it. The command is um, U mount. So we can with that we can look at the disk we have mount, currently mounted. It looks to me like there is a disk uh, there's a lot of stuff that starts with an SDA. So there must be a disk in the system SDA. And there's a lot of stuff that starts with SDB. So there must be a disk SDB. Now, SDA and SDB are um, um, uh, the, the disk I just connected is not mounted because it said it wouldn't mount. So SDA and SDB must already be disks that are in the system. It can't be that new disk that I just plugged in. OK. And then there's this weird guy down here. And in media, and I don't know what that is, that's probably that there's an SD card still in the system. Whoops. An, SD card still in the system. 
an SD card still in the system or a um, CD-ROM, a DVD, um, something like that. And in fact, it is a DVD. Okay, given that, what we're going to do is we're just going to guess. The command that's traditionally used to partition disk is called fdisk. So we're just going to guess here. Let's, let's, and be careful with this command because it's a good way to screw up a system. You type, I'm root, I've got all access to everything. If I type the wrong thing and write out a new partition table, you know, uh, it's all over. But, uh, so maybe I don't want to do this on SDA because that should be a good disk, but I think I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, type M for help. I don't know where M for help comes from, but that's uh, maybe this was written by a non-English speaking person. Um, or maybe M stands for manual or, or my god. Uh, um, anyway, I think the command I want is P for print. And that will let me print all this information about the disk. This actually says that I have a disk that has um, has um, sorry, I, I had to refer to something over here. Okay, this says that I have a disk that has three partitions on it. Uh, partition D -E slash DEV slash SDA 1 slash SDA 2 SDA 3 uh, this tells me the size of the disk in in uh, blocks. Actually, it gives me the starting block and the ending block. Um, um, or maybe, I, I, anyway, it gives me a starting point and an ending point. And this guy here says that that is um, an active partition, meaning that's where it's going to try to boot from um, unless it's told otherwise. Um, but, you know, that that's the default boot partition. Okay. Um, that just tells me, oh, and this says that this is uh, SDA, disk SDA is a um, a one gigabyte disk and um, it also tells me that the disk is of this type so it's probably on a Windows system in, in TFS or uh, HPFS I guess in, is Apple but it, it's not Apple so um, okay um, and it's a gigabyte disk okay let's look at our second disk This one has um, oh, four or five partitions, um, uh, six, well, I don't know. Actually, it's five, but um, because, well, another issue. Um, well, everybody that's watching this knows that basically with the old style disk with MBRs, you can only have four partitions and since a lot of people want four partitions, you can take one of those partitions and make that an extended partition, and then you can have more partitions, but the more partitions you have, called extended partitions, are really part of the partition that you made to put everything in. So there's really only one, two, three, four, five partitions here, uh, even though the table has, shows six. Okay, and this is a two gigabyte disk drive um, up here. And uh, cool. Okay. Um, so that tells us something. Now, what we're going, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do the same thing on this disk that I just plugged in. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to guess. It wasn't SDA, it isn't SDB, so SDC. 
No, it can't be SDC because we got an error. SDD. Nope, it can't be that because we got an error. We got another error. No error. Okay, so it must be slash DEV slash SDG. There's probably other ways of finding this too. Um, if I'm willing to look down into some of the files, particularly under slash proc, but this is it. You know, this works. Okay, um, let's look at the partition table. That has some stuff on it because I've used this disk before. I'm just trying to think whether it's got anything valuable on it. I, I don't think so, but I don't really know. This is actually a two terabyte disk um, and it's got a um, couple partitions here and um, Yeah, and and uh, and I'll just say there's nothing valuable on it because I started to build a system. I've all I have is an initial install on it. It's cheap and easy. We're just going to burn this disk. Okay, so now um, the MB. Uh, what we've used for years on disk drives is something called the MBR. The MBR stands for Master Boot Record. The Master Boot Record, um, that can be, I think it can be on a disk or it can be on one of the partitions on the disk, but, but the beginning of the disk has an MBR. Now, actually, it's got to be the, the very beginning of the disk has an MBR. It takes up 512 bytes. That's not much space. That is so little space and every byte is allocated for some use and it's got to have information on that disk like where are the partitions located? What size are they? Um, um, it's got to have a little bit of boot information to tell the system how to boot. Um, and I, I forget, you can look this up on Wikipedia or on the Google, but there's a lot of stuff that has to be in that 512 bytes. I, I've always thought it was a miracle they could do it in 512 bytes. And that's exactly why there can only be four partitions on a hard drive, because there just isn't enough space to put any more than um, little slots for four partitions. So what has been done is if you've got, if you want to do five or six partitions, you take one of those four partitions and make a big partition in it and you just uh, basically you flag that as an extended partition. Then they go down into the, um, so the system when it looks at everything, first it reads your for, 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 first four primary partitions. Then it goes down to the extended partition and the beginning of the extended partition has space for lots more partitions to be defined. And that's where all of the extended partitions are defined. And I don't remember how many you can have, but you can have quite a lot. Um, it depends on whether it's an um, IDE or ATA tight style disk or a SCSI disk um, style disk. Um, I do remember distinctly that you can put more partitions on a IDE style disk than a SCSI style disk, um, which is shocking because almost everything, the SCSI world is better than the IDE world, but uh, and the allo and the number that you can have is big enough that it doesn't really matter that because um, uh, it's more than any of us ever want in either case it's probably about 64 partitions for a SCSI and more for an IDE I I I don't really remember okay um, so 
So if we would want to get rid of partitions or make more partitions, um, we can do this using the fdisk command. Now, before going on, though, I talked a little bit about MBRs. MBRs have, are kind of being replaced by something called a GPT, um, which is, I think it stands for Global Universal Identifier Partition Table or something of that type. Um, and there's several reasons for that. One reason for that is that um, um, the MBR style disk will only uh, um, work with disk up to two terabyte. And, you know, you can buy four terabyte, six terabyte, you know, big disk nowadays. So we need something to work with bigger disk. A lot, most people are still using the MBR style of stuff because I, I believe the GPT style has a way of embedding MBR stuff in the GPT environment. And in any case, most people are still using the MBR commands and the MBR style of doing things. Um, all the textbooks I've used recently have still been using that. I'm still using that. I really should switch to the newer style. Um, and I guess I will the next time I buy a disk drive. But, um, um, and the, we've sort of halfway switched. But, you know, most of us still use fdisk as our, as our uh, command to partition disk. Now, let's type help again. And if I type help again, I can do a, um, it says type D to delete a partition. So this gets pretty, you know, we're going to delete partitions here. See, partition four, well, there is no partition four. Oh, it says, it told me there was not. Delete partition three, delete partition 2, delete partition 1. Okay, there's my new partition table. Now, the fact is, actually nothing has changed on the disk yet. This is the a copy of the partition table that's up in RAM, in memory, and nothing changes on the disk until I type the w command up here. That writes the new partition table to the disk and everything on the disk will then, I won't say be gone, I'll say be inaccessible. Uh, I, since it's not really writing much on the disk, you know, I suppose there's traces of it there if, uh, if I have proper forensic tools or I'm clever enough. But, uh, so let's write this here. Okay, now let's go back and look at that disk again. Up, oh, no partition table. Now, before we go on, I want to talk about another command. There is a, the n newer command would be g disk slash dev slash sdg. And notice instead of M for help, we actually have a question mark for help. And it's pretty much the same sort of command, only it uses, um, uh, only it can work on the bigger disk. It, um, it's very much, you know, it's the update of F disk for uh, the GPT type situation. I'm still using MBRs. Most people are, so um, um, so we'll use FDisk. Okay, if I want to make a disk then, uh, let's see, there's no partitions here. Let's create a partition. Type M for help. New, that will create a partition for me. 
uh, we'll do a primary partition. We'll do partition one. Um, I don't know how big to make this. I'm going to make it. Um, um, oh, first first sector. Just take the default. And then I've got to make this a certain size. Uh, I'm going to make this into my swap partition. The swap partition is where my swap space will be stored. The space that is kind of my virtual RAM. This system has about six gigabytes of RAM. I don't really know how big to make the swap. Um, people argue about that. There's, you know, all sorts of philosophies. Mine's different than other people's. Um, most systems say, you know, most books say, you know, make twice as much swap as you have real memory. But that doesn't make sense to me. It looks, you know, if I've got a machine with virtually no memory, then I want to make a lot of swap space because if I'm going to use that as a scientific machine, it's going to run dog slow if I do big things on it. But if I don't put aside a lot of swap, I won't be able to do them, period. I prefer slow over over um, uh, not being able to do it. So, you know, and if I've got lots and lots of RAM, then I don't need so much swap space often. I'm going to put six gigabytes of disk. Now, the I can either put these in by using numbers like like this, and in which case that's the cylinder to use. Um, or nowadays, all of us put these in by using by saying how many megabytes, how many gigabytes we want. The format you have to use for that is plus. Um, and we're going to make this six gigabyte. And the syntax you use has to have that plus sign and has to have the GB at the end. Otherwise, it won't work. Um, and then it may have to round it to make it work on the system. OK, next one we're going to make. Oh, uh, um, actually. Well, we'll go back and fix things later. We're going to make a, a primary partition. Um, we'll take the default, which is a second partition. We'll take the default here. And we're going to make this one, uh, I don't know, 32 gigabyte, because I don't know what I'm doing. OK, next one we'll take. Um, well, that's good enough. Don't need any more. Um, so now I want to write that to the file system right there. OK. Now, if I go back here, there's my, there's my disk. Um, oops. Do this just with the FG disk. Oop. Got to spell better than that. Okay. Um, now, so that's basically what I do to make uh, to make my disk um, to to make my partitions. There's nothing on the disk, um, uh, nothing useful on the disk. That's the way I make that, that, my partitions. After I make a partition, the next thing I have to do is I have to. Um, um, I format my disk. The command to format disk, well, there's two commands. There's one called MK, um, MK swap. If I want, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about something here. But let's re finish my sentence here. 
If we want to make a swap partition, we use the command mkswap like this. And that will format the disk for a, in such a way that it will be a swap partition in Linux. If we want to make it into a normal file system, we would use mkfs or some variant of mkfs, which I'll show you in a second. OK, first thing, let's go back here into fdisk because I forgot to uh, set the ID on these partitions. Let's go into M. And this allows me to change the system's ID on the partition. This, is, this ID is supposed to tell me whether I have a Linux-style partition, or a Windows-style partition, or an Apple-style partition. Well, let's try to change one. Um, first one here is, um, here is a, um, we're, we're going to change partition one. And it says I can type an L and it will give me a list of the partition styles I can use. Um, it is a Linux partition right now, but I want to make it swap space. So it should be 82 instead of 83. Uh, so I'm going to change that to an 82. If I was going to make, say, a NTFS partition, I guess I'd make it the number 7. If I could make an NTFS partition from Linux. And indeed, I can. Um, um, I can't make a Linux partition from Windows, but I can make a uh, even an NTFS partition from Linux. Um, OK, so we're going to, um, so we listed that. So the code we want here is 82. Let's list our partitions again. Well, I can change all of them if I wanted to. But you know, this is what I want. So we'll save that. Uh, do the right command again. It should be that way. Let's check. OK, we're cool. Next command would be if I would want to make that into a swap space. The first one to make a swap space, all I have to do is type make swap. Oh, uh, SDG1, I think. Now, in terms of thinking about this, Think long and hard before hitting the carriage return. This is a good way to reformat a disk you don't want to reformat, or a, a partition you do not want to for reformat. Um, so think about it before hitting the return key. Um, OK, I, I guess that's done. Now, we'll do this one here, too. But in this case, I want to make it into a MK, whoop, MKFS. And that will do the format command and format my hard disk, except I don't know what I'm doing. So let's type man space MKFS. And um, now what it is, OK. And there's a, there's a T option. I don't know what that guy is. Well, there's a lot of options on this. You, you can use an endless number of options on this guy. Um, and um, it doesn't say it. It doesn't really give me a, too good a list of options. Um, That used to be longer than it is. But let's go back here. There's also, as well as MKFS, let's see. If I remember the bash shell correctly, if I type the beginning of a command and then I type um, tab tab, it will give me other variants of the command. Well, here's variants of that command. There's MKFS 
And if I type MKFS space minus T, and then I can name the type of file system I want to make. Linux has a lot of different type of, types of file systems I can make. Um, it's not like Windows, where with Windows, what, there's a FAT32, uh, there's a FAT16, which is really DOS. There's a FAT32, which is really glorified DOS. There's NTFS, which is their 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 fancy caching file system and I guess there's one for DVDs or CDs and if, maybe a few others there's not a lot of them though in the Linux world and the Unix world there are a lot of different file systems hundreds of them um, you know there's three for every Linux distribution I think well uh, I exaggerate but there's a lot of them uh, I don't even know what all the ones on this system are. But, uh, and one way of getting to those is you can type MKFS space minus T space and then the name of the file system that you want to create, then the rest of the command. The other way uh, that I often is use is on most systems they put on special commands MKFS BFS if you want to make a BFS type disk. I am not sure what that is. MKFS uh, BTRFS for some sort of backup type file system. Um, BK, uh, MKFS dot CRAMFS. I think that's a compressed FS a file system. Um, the one that everybody is using today is mkfs.ext4. Um, OK, there's some exceptions. But that seems, uh, for a long time, starting way back in the 1990s, uh, Remy Card, I believe it was Remy Card, that wrote a file system called the ext file system. The second revision was the ext2, which we used for years and years and years and years. And then ext3 and now ext4. There's other file systems around. There's one, uh, the riser file system, which was uh, developed by Hans Riser. The, um, well, the VFAT file system is actually a, a DOS-like file system, as is the MS-DOS file system. Um, and here, this guy should make an NTFS file system. And I've only got a few of these installed on the system. There's really hundreds of them. OK, so given that, um, given that we will, um, um, we're going to um, make this an MKFS dot E, ext4, I guess. Let's do a man page and just see what options exist. Well, there's lots of options. Lots of options. We're just going to do it and hope for the best. Now, remember, I am root. SD, SDG2. Let's see. Uh, I'd better think a little bit before I hit the carriage return because this is going to write a new file system on my system, on my disk. And if I got the wrong disk, you know, like I just wrote a new file system on my root directory, uh, not a very good thing. Um, SDG2, that is indeed the file system I want. OK. It goes off and I don't know. Oh, and it does its thing. And it's. These, depending on your file system, depending on things, this can take a long time to do, or it can take not so long. It depends on your file system, depends on the size of the file system you're creating. MKFS can take a long time to make a file system. Um, what happens when it does this is it puts a file on the partition called the super block. The super block, do we have anything that tells us anything about super blocks? Um, 
Oh, well, this, if you look at Wikipedia under uh, Master Boot Record, it will tell you a lot about the boot record. Likewise, if you look at their thing on uh, uh, the G, the GPT, it will tell you about the new system. Um, I don't have anything about the super block. Oh, well. And I'm not going to look for anything. OK, the super block is a block, basically a file, a hidden file, on the disk that gives information about what sort of file system you have just created and where key things are in that file system. And um, a, a quite a bit of information about the file system. And every one of these files has to create a super block. Every, every file system needs a super block of some sort. Um, and then it goes off and it creates something called an inode table. And we'll get back to the inode table. But first, let's think about the super block. The super block tells you um, information like where there's some kind of bad spots on disk. Those are, I think those are kept in the super block. Or maybe I've used some file systems that keep those on a separate file called the black bad spot file. But the super block tells things where the bad spot file is. Um, there's a lot of information that has to be kept. It's kept in the super block. If anything goes wrong with the super block, if it gets corrupted in any way, if anything goes wrong, it's over for the whole file system. That's kind of like not very good. That is a weakness in the way disk drives work. So what do we do? Most of the time, they keep an alternative. They keep copies of the super block, an alternative super block, maybe a couple alternative super blocks, uh, several super blocks on the system, which are just copies of the first super block. So if the first one becomes unreadable, you can hopefully use an alternative super block to save the file system. So super blocks you'll never ever see. You'll never have to deal with until you're desperate <laughs> and you're trying to save a file system and you don't know quite how they work, but they're important. <laughs> um, and um, actually, I think you can. I um, uh, for. Some file systems, there's actually a command that lets you read the super block. I think dump 2fs would let me read uh, the super block on that disk, among other things. OK, I forgot an E. It's make a dump E2FS. And that reads lots of, st whoop, lots of stuff off that disk. I can go back and look at the super block. And, you know, and it tells me where the alternate super blocks are. And uh, lots of information about the disk. More than I want to know. OK. Um, next. Um, um, that is, um, oh, we should finish by talking a little bit about the inode table. Because Unix file systems tend to have something called the inode table. This is unique to Unix file systems. Um, um, Windows uses a different system. They use a different system in fa in the the fat file systems. They use a different one in the um, in the uh, NTFS file system. But Unix systems use something called a uh, a uh, inode table. Let's go down here. Let's see if we can find inode table. Whoop! I inode table. Oh, 
Oh, what do we want? I know tables. Um, well, the inode table I'll let you guys read this or read these when at your own leisure. But the inode table hey, there's a statement that I that that is familiar to us, right? Everything is a file. The inode table is um is a table and it is a table fixed length table. Um it does not vary in length. It is a fixed length table that basically um, um, gives that is associated with the files and it gives information about the files line by line. It gives the inode of the file. Every file has an inode number. So there is the inode number of the file. There's the uh, length of the file, the beginning location of the file, the um, um, maybe the directory it's in, I don't remember. There's also lots of information stored. In, oh, the date time created, date time modified, lots of time in, uh, information about dates and times. There's also information about the permissions. It gives information about who's the owner, who's the um, um, the group associated with it, and it gives the mode information about um, you know whether it's got whether the owner has read write X rights, uh, whether the group has read write X rights and and also the other person. Uh, the non non group non owners. Okay, so all of that information is stored up in the inode table. So the inode table is really critical. It's really important. Now it's fixed length. So but I just said that they store the owner uh, whoever they they tell you who owns the file. It's up in the inode table. So if they're going to tell you who owns the file but the but the record the the line that has that information is fixed length how can they do that well that's why with unix instead of using people's names they use the your uid number your user id number everything is done by user id number and then they keep a file someplace the slash etc slash password file that associates the UID number with the uh, username so they can print out the username when people ask questions. However, on the file system, everything is done by UID number or GID number. It's not done by group name or username. Likewise, notice the one thing I didn't say was in the inode uh, table is the file name. The file name is not in the inode table. The files inode is in there, and that's the identifier for the file. But the file name is actually stored in the as part of the file, the data in the directory that the file is stored in. So the file name is part of the directory. It's not part of the inode. OK. Um, Going back here, let's end this part of the video because it's about dinner time and I'm getting hungry. Um, and we need to talk about a lot more stuff. But right now what I want to do is we have talked about MBRs and GPTs. Um, we I should mention that one of the things the new partition system does, the GPTs, it allows you to have something called a GUID or a UUID, which is a universal um, 
um, I don't know. It's a unique number that identifies disk drives and file systems. Um, it, it, it's a unique number and that really leads to good things down the line. Um, in the past, there was no way to identify um, disk drives or file systems except by their location when you put them into the machine. And so if you had removable drives and you'd swap them in the machine, they'd get different um, different names <laughs> and that would lead to nightmares. It led for very unstable systems. We use uh, UUIDs to get around that now or Microsoft has a little variant on the UUID that they call a GUID. It's the same concept. Um, and then we talked about how to partition a disk, how to um, format a disk and um, um, and the fact that Unix file systems have well the fact that all file systems have super blocks and Unix file systems have super blocks and inode tables at kind of the top layer of your file system. Okay with that I'm going to um, with that I am going to end with that I'm going to end this portion of the disk uh, of the video which is already I don't know long and um, I'll come back and do some more uh, later okay bye bye